In this video, we'll cover how to compress images in WPF using the Tinyfy API, including how to set up an interface like this one to let the user add and remove the images they want to compress. Hey guys and welcome back to the brand new Azul Coding. Today we'll be compressing images with the help of these UI controls I've added in already to save time. But you can of course design your application however you like. All the code in this video is available from the link in the description down below. I'll be writing this in C-sharp, but there's a VB.net translation available if you follow the link and scroll down. Let's set up the application and install the plugin we'll need. To install the Tinyfy plugin that will help us compress the images, go to Tools and Visual Studio, NuGet Package Manager, and then Manage NuGet Packages for Solution. Then make sure you have this Tinyfy plugin installed. In the code behind, we'll need to add an import for this plugin, as well as a Win32 import for the open file dialog we'll be needing too. As you can see below, I've added in an API key from Tinyfy, and you can get yours from the link in the description. At the time of recording, the free version allows you to compress up to 500 images per month. Let's see the XAML code. As you can see, I've added in a couple of buttons and a label at the top, but the most important thing is the items control. This essentially allows you to bind a list, array, or other enumerable collection to the item source property, so that each element of the collection is displayed in the UI using this button template. And each item will be a key value pair, the key being the full file path, and the value just being the file name. And we combine the key and the value to the properties in the UI like so. Let's go back to the code behind. We can use an observable collection to add or remove items to it, so that when we do, the UI will be automatically updated. This is much more efficient than having to set the source to a new list every time. Let's add in a collection here, with each item being a simple key value pair. We'll then need to set the item source to the collection in the constructor. And while we're here, we can hide the compress button as there'll initially be no images to compress, and also set our Tinyfy API key in the config. To finish the setup process, we'll also need an open file dialog, so let's add one in and restrict it to JPEG and PNG files. Now we'll let the user add and remove items from the UI. I've added in some event handlers below, so let's start with Add Button Click. When the user clicks the Add Files button, we'll show the Open File dialog, and if it returns true, meaning the user clicked OK, then we'll add the files the user selected using a new function that I'll create below. The function takes in an array of file names, and so for each file name, we'll add it to our observable collection, which will automatically update the UI, remembering that the key will be the full file path, and the value will just be the file name. We want to prevent the user from adding the same image again, so if there's any function, we'll check if there's an item in the list that matches the file path. If that file path isn't in the collection, we can add it. Then we'll show the compress button. Let's test that out. If I click the Add Files button, because I set the multi-select property of the Open File dialog to true, we're able to select more than one image at a time. And as you can see, the images have been added correctly. Back to the code, let's now add the ability to remove files. When the user right-clicks on an item in the list, they'll be presented with a Remove Menu Item. We've binded the file path to the tag property of the menu item, so we'll use that as an identifier to remove the file with a new function like so. In the remove file function, we can find the item in image list that we'll need using this where function. It'll search the list for all items that match the key property. In our scenario, there should only be one file path that matches, and so we'll need to get the first item in our result collection and remove it. And similar to before, we'll hide the compress button if there are no images left in the list. Let's try removing items now. If I add some back and then right click on one, as you can see, I'm able to remove them as expected. Let's get on to the main part, compressing the images. I've added in this click event handler for the compress button. When the button gets clicked, we'll first disable the buttons in the UI and set the title label to say compression in progress. In a try catch block, we'll loop through the images. Because we'll be removing the images once they're compressed, we'll need to cast the collection to a new list, as we can't edit the collection we're looping through. We'll start by using the tinyfy.fromfile function, and then we'll save the compressed images to a new file with a compress suffix. So if the image is called image1.png, the compress file will be called image1.compress.png. Let's work out how to add that suffix into the file name. Thank you. 
and then use the tinyfile.toFile function to save the result. We can then remove the file from the list and show a message box once it's all done. Once the process is done, we'll revert the UI back to what it was, hiding the compressed button if there are no more images. Let's test it out. If I open File Explorer, you can see the new compressed images have been added. Let's finish off by calculating the compression ratio between the uncompressed image and the compressed one. We'll need to update the message box with information about how much the images are compressed by. We can use a string builder to help us add to the message. We can then use File Info down here to work out the size of the old and new images. and then perform this calculation to calculate the percentage we reduced the file size by. Let's format that correctly and add it to the message appropriately. If we test it out to see the compression ratio, now you can see the message has been updated with the compression ratio for all images. If you're looking for an example app, I've created a suite of WPF desktop apps that are all open source. I've also made a language and insight which is 100% free. Check them both out in the description down below. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to keep up to date with the latest from Azul Coding. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.